What's up guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the tech specs behind the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, and we're going to be comparing them. So we're going to find out which console is more powerful, and compare each specific piece of hardware against each other. So, before we get into today's video, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Make sure you guys subscribe, that way you guys don't miss out on any more great PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X videos. we got a lot of stuff coming, and there's still a lot of news to be had about these new systems. So let's get into it. So today, the PlayStation 5 was actually revealed. They revealed the hardware power in the PlayStation 5, and we kind of knew some of this before. We knew it was going to have an AMD like RDNA 2 GPU. It was going to have an AMD Zen 2 CPU. It was going to have an SSD in it, and it was going to have a 4K Blu-ray drive. That was about it. We didn't know specific numbers behind it, but that was revealed today. So as for the PlayStation 5, we know that it will have a Zen 2 8-core CPU at 3.5 GHz. It will be running at a variable frequency, though. This means that the CPU will actually like boost up or down depending on the game, depending on the power draw and the load, and a whole bunch of different factors. But they say that the CPU's frequency will be capped at 3.5 GHz, so it's not like 3.5 is the base clock, and you're going to have a boost clock. It's 3.5 is the absolute max of the, of the CPU but it could go lower depending on whatever else, what it needs, depending on uh, power constraints or other restrictions. But 3.5 gigahertz is actually pretty incredible. And uh, Sony actually talked about this a lot in the press conference. They talked a lot about hardware specs behind it. And it's actually kind of boring unless you're like a developer or somebody who's really into this stuff behind the scenes. But for the average gamer, it's really boring. And a lot of it probably flew over everybody's heads. But basically, they said that rather than target like efficiency, and power consumption, they're basically going to try and like max out the CPU at all times, and then based off that, they're going to run the CPU at 100%, and they're going to only like vary that based on power. Well, 3.5 gigahertz is actually pretty incredible on the PlayStation 5, uh, especially when you compare that to the PS4. The original PS4 was an 8-core, but it was Jaguar, AMD's Jaguar architecture, but it ran at 1.6 gigahertz, dude, so this is over twice as fast in just like raw speed but it's also you know zen 2 so it has a lot better efficiency and all sorts of other improvements too so cpu is going to be a major upgrade with this new system the gpu on the playstation 5 is going to be a 10.28 teraflop gpu with 36 compute units at 2.23 gigahertz and once again this will be a variable frequency so this one also is capped at 2.3 gigahertz meaning that that is the max frequency it can reach it can go lower than that depending on the game and whatever else but 2.23 is the actual max that it will be capped at now you compare that to original playstation 4 which was at 1.8 teraflops so this is over five times as fast as an original playstation 4 original playstation 4 only had 18 compute units at 800 megahertz this one has double the compute units at 36 and it's almost like triple the speed and the frequency on that too. So it goes up to 2.23 gigahertz. Now, let's actually compare that right there. That's a good stopping point. Let's compare that to the Xbox Series X. The Xbox Series X has an 8-core Zen 2 CPU. So it's probably going to be the exact same CPU based on like almost the exact same architecture. Everything, the CPUs should basically be the exact same. Just like how in the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, they both had an AMD Jaguar CPUs. But the CPU in the Xbox Series X will run at 3.8 gigahertz. But that's like single-threaded. But if then you have SMT, which is like multi-threading, then it can run at 3.6 gigahertz on across all eight cores. And they say it's a custom Zen 2 CPU. So at all eight cores, the Xbox Series X will run 100 megahertz faster than the PlayStation 5's max. But if you just run one core, then it will be 300 megahertz than PlayStation 5's all core. The GPU in the Xbox Series X is a 12 teraflop GPU comprised of 52 compute units at 1.825 gigahertz, which is a custom RDNA 2 GPU, which we're also going to talk about RDNA 2 in a second. It means that Xbox Series X has a 12 teraflop GPU and the PlayStation 5 only has a 10 teraflop GPU. So there is a lot more compute units in the Xbox Series X. It is 52 compared to 36 in the PlayStation 5. But the PlayStation 5 is actually running at a higher frequency. So it's 1.825 on the Xbox Series X compared to 2.23 on the PlayStation 5. And Sony actually did mention this in their conference though. They said that it's better to have a higher frequency on the GPU than rather have more compute units. Because according to them, they basically said it's easier to divvy up tasks between a lesser number of compute units rather than trying to stretch them out across many of them. So if you only have like 15 things that need to be done, it's easier to get all those 15 things done on 36 compute units then rather than try and make that them work on 52 of them but it's more efficient to do them on less compute units but also like clocked faster so they can get it done quicker 
on less compute units. So interesting there on paper and in like theoretical mathematical performance, the Xbox Series X has more teraflops. So it should be able to produce more math is basically what teraflops are. It's not a measure of actual like game performance. It's just a measure of like basically how much math a GPU can do. So 10 teraflops compared to 12, but the PlayStation 5 is clocked faster but it has less compute units. Is Sony right when they say that it's easier to keep 36 compute units fed rather than more? I guess we're just gonna have to see with this new generation. But one thing to point out, in my opinion, is I think with this new generation, we're gonna see a lot more textures and a lot more high quality games where the games are actually gonna be way more detailed. So I feel like it'll be a lot easier to fill up all 52 of those compute units on the Xbox Series X rather than those 36 on the PlayStation 5. Those 36 are gonna get eaten up real quick, whereas it's gonna be maybe a little bit harder to fill up all 52 of them but there's gonna be more of them. So potentially it can be better parallelized. The GPU architecture for both of these is both a custom RDNA 2 on both the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. They're custom in their own way, so they're not using like an identical GPU, obviously. I mean, one has more compute units and they have different frequencies than the other, but there's also other stuff besides just frequencies and compute units. They both will have ray tracing hardware in it, which is part of AMD's RDNA 2 architecture. So another thing that the GPU actually directly impacts is hardware ray tracing. So this is something that came up on Twitter. This wasn't something that either Microsoft or Sony officially announced. One source on Twitter says that one of the drawbacks of using less compute units is less quote intersection engines end quote for hardware ray tracing, which are tied to each shader unit. So basically it means that the more compute units you have means the more physical compute units you have for hardware ray tracing. So the Xbox Series X will have 44% more ray tracing hardware than the PlayStation 5. So this is another reason why I think that Microsoft went with such a high number of compute units. And they also point out why this is why Microsoft is talking about real-time path tracing and then Sony is talking about global illumination. So Sony talked also a lot about 3D audio and like ray tracing audio, whereas Microsoft is committed to doing like the full fat ray tracing that you might see on Nvidia's new graphics cards. So they even demonstrated this in Minecraft where like every light source is actually path traced. And it seems that Xbox and Microsoft is going after like the full fat PC market where you're going after like the full ray tracing, the full path tracing that you see in like Nvidia's marketing demos. And basically what you think of when you think of ray tracing. Sony's is more of a little bits of lighting here and there, audio and maybe reflections. But I think it's really interesting though, is that the Xbox Series X is gonna have 44% more ray tracing hardware. So basically right there confirms that the Xbox Series X is gonna be better at ray tracing than the PlayStation 5. That seems like a really big deal. And I think Sony might've overlooked that. I think that might be one of the biggest bottlenecks for the PlayStation 5 in my opinion, but let's keep going with these specs though. So for memory on the PlayStation 5, there will be 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 256 bit bus. But then you compare that to the Xbox Series X. The Xbox Series X will also have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, but using a wider 320 bit bus. So the memory bandwidth on the PlayStation 5, all 16 gigabytes will run at 448 gigabytes per second. But then on the Xbox Series X, 10 of those 16 gigabytes will run at 560 gigabytes per second, and then six of them will run in a little bit slower at 336 gigabytes per second. So this one is a little bit weird because Microsoft is splitting up their RAM. Sony just went with the flat approach of having all the memory being clocked at 448 gigabytes per second. But one advantage to Microsoft's approach is that 10 of those 16 gigabytes can run at a faster 560 compared to Sony's 448. So 112 gigabytes faster in memory bandwidth, but then you also have six gigabytes that are slower at 336 gigabytes per second. So the Xbox Series X is a little bit weird. 10 gigabytes of your 16 gigabytes of RAM run 112 gigabytes faster, and then six of them run 112 gigabytes slower. But Xbox does have a breakdown though of the RAM that some of the RAM is actually gonna be utilized for the operating system, which is most likely some of the slower six gigabytes of 336 gigabytes per second RAM. Whereas that 10 gigabytes of RAM is mostly probably gonna be used for games. So there's really fast RAM used for games. Memory, it's kind of weird. They both trade blows. Some of it's faster, some of it's slower, kind of weird. But for storage for the PlayStation 5, it will feature a custom 825 gigabyte SSD. And you compare that to the Xbox Series X, we'll have a one terabyte custom NVMe SSD. So they're both gonna feature SSDs, gonna be really good. But it's kind of weird though that Sony's SSD isn't actually going to be a terabyte, whereas Microsoft's is. Sony explained this in their conference as to why they, they don't have a whole one terabyte SSD. I mean, obviously the operating system is going to take up some space. A bunch of different stuff is going to take up space. So on your PlayStation 5, 
you might not actually gonna be able to use all 825 my guess is you're probably only gonna be able to use like 700 gigabytes which honestly in today's day and age isn't a lot I mean even Warzone is like 100 gigabytes that's gonna take up like a seventh of your entire drive on your PlayStation 5 so you're only gonna be able to have a couple games I mean Xbox isn't a ton better with one terabyte you're probably only gonna be able to get to use like 900 gigabytes or so but that's still a little bit better it might mean you'll be able to fit like one or two more games on your system but the good thing to note though is that they both will feature expandable storage so the playstation 5 has an nvme ssd slot so you can plug in like an m.2 ssd they did talk about this in their conference though is that the m.2 slots they're unregulated so they can be different sizes so they're going to come out with like official specs of what kind of ssd what kind of an nvme ssd you will need because some of them might not actually be able to fit with your playstation 5 so we're just going to wait on specific details about that as it comes and then microsoft has a different approach where for expandable storage you can have a one terabyte expansion card which will match the internal storage exactly and it's just basically like a little memory card that you plug in just like on a playstation 2 or an xbox 360 or even a gamecube you remember those old memory cards basically plug that in and that's your expansion storage but then they both also allow you to have external storage as well the playstation 5 will let you have usb hard drive support and the xbox series x will allow you to have usb 3.2 external hard drive support so interesting playstation didn't specify what kind of usb i'm assuming it's probably the same thing as probably usb 3.2 but microsoft said about these external hard drives that hard drives can be used on the xbox series x but they can only be used for original xbox games xbox 360 games and xbox one games you cannot play an xbox series x game off of a hard drive it just won't work it's too slow so if you want to play an xbox series x game you have to play it off of an ssd whether that's the internal or one of these one terabyte expansion cards. Sony didn't say anything about that, but dude, I if I had a wager, I would put money down saying that you won't be able to play PlayStation 5 games off of an external hard drive, that you're probably gonna have to copy that to the internal drive or one of these NVMe SSD expansion storage cards. IO throughput is actually really important for this for storage, and the PlayStation 5 will have an IO throughput of 5.5 gigabytes per second of raw, and eight to nine gigabytes per second of compressed data. Now you compare that to the Xbox Series X, the Xbox Series X has a 2.4 gigabytes per second of IO throughput of raw and 4.8 gigabytes per second of compressed data with custom hardware decompression block. So the PlayStation 5 is gonna have a lot faster IO throughput, which is actually gonna be kind of incredible. It has over double the raw IO throughput and about double the compressed IO throughput as well. So that's really interesting. The PlayStation 5, this is like one of the first things about the PlayStation 5 that is fast faster than the Xbox Series X. The Xbox Series X in general is more powerful and will be faster, but the PlayStation 5 will have faster IO throughput, which is good for the SSD. Basically means the SSD is gonna be faster than the Xbox Series X's. So potentially loading times will be lower on the PlayStation 5. So if you load up a match, you'll be able to get in faster on the PlayStation 5 than you might be able to on an Xbox Series X. But then again, it's not just entirely based on numbers like this. The CPU also has to process a lot of things. So the CPU might become a bottleneck. And this is also demonstrated currently on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, is that if you put an SSD into those systems, you try and load up a game, loading times are gonna be improved, but they're not gonna be as significant as they are on say a PC. That's because the CPU in the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One it has a huge bottleneck there so the cpu has to do a lot of work too so i would honestly expect loading times to be pretty similar between these two i i mean i might expect the playstation 5 to be a couple seconds faster but when loading times are only like two seconds does it really matter if the loading time is two seconds versus four but then lastly with these two devices is that they'll both feature a 4k uhd blu-ray drive it's interesting to note that the playstation 5 this is the first time the playstation console is actually featuring a 4k uhd blu-ray drive this is good for not only just movies because Obviously, you can play 4K Blu-ray movies on your PlayStation 5 and watch them on there, but it's better than that. It also means that now discs can use 4K Blu-rays, which have a higher capacity storage, so games are actually going to be able to be better off of discs and be better for games overall. And it's not just physical movies. It's not just watching movies. It's also about games, too. But one thing, lastly, that Microsoft detailed with their tech specs is they have a performance target. They say that with the Xbox Series X, they're targeting... 4k at 60 fps with up to 120 fps so they don't mention 8k here it technically has 8k support because they both have hdmi 2.1 so it can technically reach 8k but that's not what they're targeting they're not targeting 8k games because obviously people don't have 8k displays but they're targeting 4k 60 fps games maybe up to 120 fps depending on the game but i would say probably like very detailed worlds because the xbox one x can hit 4k 60 fps in a number of games 
but this one is significantly more powerful than that system. But for it to also target basically the same resolution and frame rate is interesting. So it basically means that the system is the games are going to be way more detailed. So things matter more than just pixel counts too. But that is the difference between the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 in terms of specs. On paper, the Xbox Series X is more powerful, has a more powerful GPU and CPU, but that could be a good thing for Sony, even though they have a weaker system, is that it might also be cheaper, so we're going to have to find out pricing and stuff in time. And then one thing, dude, I got to point this out. Anytime I bring up Xbox versus PlayStation is that all the Sony ponies come out in full force and they say, oh, power doesn't matter. It's all about exclusives. And I put out a tweet about this and I riled up a lot of people about this. I'm going to make a separate video about that. But just know for the specific hardware, not we're not talking games here, just hardware, the Xbox Series X is more powerful. That's not me being biased. That's just the truth. The Xbox Series X is more powerful, but the PlayStation 5 may be faster in terms of loading for their SSD. Each one has their advantages, and we're going to leave it at that. So that is the difference between hardware specs on the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments down below. Try and keep it civil. I know it probably won't, but try and keep it civil. We're all gamers at the end of the day. We like playing games, and this is going to be great for everybody. Competition is a good thing. But that's going to do it for our video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.